In this episode of the Journey to the Baja 1000, we're taking the used brakes and hub from the Chevy Silverado and making custom spindles for the J10 race truck. You're watching the Journey to the Baja 1000. Okay, let's talk about the next part. As you can see here, I'm already kind of mocking up how the uh, lower suspension arm is gonna go, but what I really need to know next is what is it connecting to on the other end, the dimensions of the spindles. So let's go ahead and take a look in this video on how I went ahead and made the other uh, spindles for this truck. Okay, now that the plasma table's going, I'm ready to start cutting some parts, and I would really like to start cutting the A-arms, and so this thing starts coming together but I have to know what those are connected to. So I kind of have to start at the extremes, my fixed uh, dimensions, which in this case will be the spindles. Once I have that thing designed and put together, then I'll know how long to make the A-arms and then I can change those at the chassis side. Let's go ahead and take a look at what I'm doing with the design and maybe as I got the parts together, how it's slightly changing the way I'm gonna build the spindle. So here is the necessary evil anytime that you're trying to do a build like this. You've got to clean the old parts. And I will take the time to really give a good scrubbing all the parts. And it, to turn out the brake calipers, once they cleaned up, I didn't even have to repaint them because the paint underneath is some kind of baked on uh, coating. So I was going to leave it the way it is. But I also like just to see if there's any damage or something like that. And you really can't tell that unless you clean all the parts off. Are there leaks or anything like that? In this case, the calipers were good. And then once you get all the parts together, then it's really just a matter of measuring them and then trying to connect the dots and make them fit together into whatever new part you're making. Let's see how I connect the dots on these spindles. All right, let's check out the spindle. The old spindle from the Chevy Silverado, the lower suspension arm mounted way down here. I'm planning on mounting it somewhere about the center of the hub, basically to give myself more clearance uh, just based on the, sus the suspension geometry. So I'm not using the spindle, I'm gonna chuck most of it. I still wanna use the bearing, I still wanna use the brakes. As I build my own spindle, if you can't tell, the distance here is about two inches and the distance on the inside is about an inch. So I need about one inch of a spacer off of this. I could either cut quarter inch plate and stack it, but what I'm gonna give it a shot here is I'm gonna see if I can't cut this completely apart, the spindle in the, uh, the bandsaw, and then turn it on its side, weld the bottom flange to a piece of metal that I can then chuck it in my other bandsaw and cut it. If I had a lathe, I would turn it down. That'd be the easiest thing to do, or some kind of a CNC mill. That'd be the easiest thing uh, to do. I don't have those things, so we'll, we'll do the best with what we got. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so here I go again with band saws. I love band saws they just work so well and i think the thing that i find and nobody told me this before it's just so what i found after using them is that the difference between a band saw and like a circular like a cold saw or something like that, that you might use is just that they resist building up heat the saw has just so many more teeth going through the part and they don't build up heat and you, I've, I've got other circular saws and abrasion saws they build heat and then just stall out the blade um, and the bandsaw just keeps grinding through. So there's this bandsaw, and I got the other big bandsaw, which I'll show you in a second. And, um, this is a Milwaukee bandsaw. I have it in a swag um, uh, mount that holds the bandsaw, and then I'm using a foot pedal. And I'll, I'll put a li link in the, the description for all those things if you're interested in getting something like this. So the trick when you're using just a bandsaw or something like that is, and you're making a very specific part, is how do you chuck the thing in the tool you're gonna cut? Because it's gonna put a lot of torque on that part. 
you just can't grab it right at the very end. So what I'm doing is I'm welding a piece of four by four scrap steel that I had um, to the part, and then that will allow me to chuck the four by four in the saw, and then I'll be able to slice the rest of that part off without it, you know, flying off of the uh, the saw. Okay, if you were not a believer of the bandsaw before, you probably will be now. Of all the circular saws I've had, nothing can do what this saw can do. I've got the 4x4 that I've welded onto, the spacer chucked into the saw, and then now I'm running some coolant as I cut through this thing, and it just slices perfectly everything off the spacer that I didn't want. At the end of it, the blade was fine. I'm still using it today. It is just such a great saw, uh, and it is just so durable totally worth the price. I'll have again a link for this thing in the description below. Cool. This is my favorite part of a budget build. I started out with that part on the right and I ended up with that spacer on the left. And all it took was a little bit of my own time and also some wear on my tools. That being said, now I have a spacer. It fits exactly where I need it to as I start making my new spindle. The price was exactly right, free, and I didn't have to take, wait any time for somebody to make this part deliver it to me. Okay, it is tough to design things without having all the parts. So I finally have the parts together. I have the spacer that I made off of the old spindle. Finally got the brakes cleaned up and uh, they look good enough. Uh, and then I just mocked up really quickly a really simple bracket that will hold the um, the rod in at the other side or the uniball and what I can see my original plan was to run the brake totally vertical and also to rotate this such that the bolts uh, were going to be split in between the um, the quarter inch plates of the spindle but as you can see that there'll be some interference by the mounting bracket of the uh, the brake so what I'm having to do is offset a little bit I can still get the same plan that I wanted with the uniball uh, in the middle I just have to orient it slightly different and make it to where just this quarter inch plate will just clear the bottom of that bracket. I can still, I can grind off some of that if I have some clearance problems, but you can kind of see how this will go together. It won't be uh, completely symmetric like I had planned. So there's a little bit of a trick when it comes to putting things into CAD, but if you just break it down into its basic elements, it just isn't that difficult. First, I just got all the dimensions off of all the parts, the brakes, that little spacer that goes onto the hub, and then all, also the dimensions of the uniball. And then I, from there, I also have the dimensions of the wheel. So this is like the uh, inside of the wheel that the, everything's got to fit inside of. And then this line right here is the brake disc, which also everything's got to kind of fit around that too. Uh, and then it, these holes right here represent the holes of the brake caliper. And of course they've got to go on here some way, but what you really have to remember is that the brake caliper really only rotates in relation to the center of the wheel. So I just, okay, let me put two holes in there and anchor them in relation to the center of the wheel. And now I can rotate those until I figure out how the brake caliper is going to go in there. Same thing with the, the hub. These four holes right here are part of the hub, but they, again, they just rotate in relation to the center of the, uh, the wheel. And then I have some vertical plates, which is going to be where the um, the uniballs are going to mount. So now I just got to kind of maneuver those around inside of CAD until I have no interference with bolts and, and all those kinds of things. And other considerations I need to think about is I want to keep that caliper as much as vertical as I possibly can, because of course calipers have bleeders on the top and I want to be able to orient that. And I want it at the back of the, the, uh, the spindle because I want it to be protected by the lower suspension arm from any rocks and those kinds of things. So there's some other constraints here uh, also. But what I did is I was able to find out that if I rotated the caliper backwards about uh, eight degrees, and then I also rotated this hub about 21 degrees, then bolt holes line up and clear, and I make this, this bracket here, then all the holes are gonna, they'll, they'll, they'll be cleared such that I will be able to put the thing together and take it apart while you know it's once i put it all together which is you know it wouldn't be a good idea to put a bolt hole somewhere where you can't get to it later on when you're trying to assemble the part so 
So I got the uh, template printed off of uh, Fusion 360. I'm gonna use this cool uh, little cutter here. I'm go ahead and just cut it out. Sure is a lot cheaper to have this thing cut out of paper and check it now, as opposed to quarter inch plate steel. Well, I think it's gonna look pretty good. Now I got the piece of paper in there. You can see all the dimensions work pretty good. I'm going to need to take a little bit out here in the program before I cut the uh, the final plate. Then also I'm going to do some dimension, check some dimensions, and see where my steering rod is going to land up here. Because if I can, I will extend this plate out and just make that a, as a part of the backing there to give some more uh, rigidity to that part. But overall, I think it's going to look pretty good. So here's what I love about Fusion 360. Now you can see the parts you're going to be uh, making before you start cutting them out. So um, this is the one part I haven't shown you yet. This is the uh, the spindle upright. This is going to be quarter inch plate. It's 16 inches from the lower uniball to the upper uniball. And you can see this kick out here a little bit. And that is where it is going to clear the rim, the tire, and, uh, and everything. It will be uh, boxed in on the front and the back. But just uh, that's what it'll look like right now. Here's the plate that holds everything together. This is where it mounts to that spacer that we made earlier. Here's the brake mount, uh, and it clears those bolts right there. And then this kick out right here, this is for where the uh, the steering is going to uh, be mounted. I'll go ahead and brace that thing really good so we don't rip the steering off. Let's go ahead and put this thing uh, through Langmeyer Assist, uh, through the Fusion 360's manufacturing program, and then we'll drop it into the Langmeyer Systems CNC plasma table and cut these parts out and get them going. So here is the Langmeyer Systems Crossfire Pro Plasma Cutter just going to work on this quarter inch plate and of course I have this sped up but it just goes to work on it and you can see I don't have a lot of waste because I'm able to nest those parts close together uh, and then it just cuts down the time. I'm sitting there with my hands in my pocket while I'm watching. What I'm watching for while it's cutting is I'm trying to see if any of the parts, when they fall out of the sheet, if they tip up and maybe will strike the uh, plasma cutter as it goes around. Now, there is logic in the plasma cutter. You can kind of watch it that as it cuts something, if it thinks that there's a possibility that, that part will tip up, it will maneuver the cutter around it. And it does a pretty good job. But, man, just some awesome parts just coming straight out of the machine. So of course, as you know, I got all the parts together. Some of the plans change, and that just happens. You just got to be flexible as you make the plan. But you know, the ultimate goal is just to get just a gnarly suspension with tons of travel and no interference. And uh, and I think this is looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. And the ultimate goal is to just get a vehicle that can roll under its own power to the start of the Baja 1000, and everything after that's gravy. I think these parts are looking pretty good. We're ready to start preparing them and getting them into the weld shop. So I think the spindles are looking awesome. Uh, we're gonna end this part of it right here and we're gonna pick it up on part two of the spindle build where I'm gonna show you what I think you're really gonna be interested in is how do I take now the mill scale off of that plate still and get it ready to weld. And I think you're really gonna be impressed on how easy it is. And again, it's a budget build, how cheap it is to get all that stuff ready to go. 
And I'll see you on the next episode of the Journey to the Baja 1000. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. We'll see you next time. Take care of yourself. Thank you.